Okay, today is April 7th. Well, actually the 8th, I guess. Because it's uh, a little after midnight. But, I got, uh, I'm not even sure when my last update was, but I, what I talked about. But, um, I got my last frame in here, last engine room frame. So we are framed up to the engine room. This, what you're looking at here, is all aft cabin. Um, in this frame right in front of me here is the engine room. Now, I also took this frame 46, which I wasn't sure about. It's kind of a small one back here, because I wasn't sure how it was going to attach to things. But I got to looking at things back here a little bit. Um, and that's this frame here. And you can see I just kind of got it tied up there and slotted into place. And then I got to... But I was going to run into problems how I was going to install this one. Especially if I put the, the transom on, I'd never get this frame in place. It would hit the ceilings or, or uh, you know, the transom's on. Of course, you can't slip it over the back. So I went ahead and slipped it in there right away. And I still couldn't just get it in there. I had to do a little reinforcing here and then cut out this middle brace um, so that I could get it up over that uh, transom knee and get it in there, and which I did, no problem. Um, I think it's going to go in all right the way it is. Um, here's the station line here for station 46. So it's going to sit back here. Um, it will not have a a floor timber, of course, but uh, I think, I don't know, I suppose we can run a few screws or put some blocking inside there or whatever to to hold it in place, but uh, once the other, once the other, the planking and, and uh, stringers and stuff are installed, that'll, that'll hold it in place too. It's not a very big frame. And then I got the transom to do, which I can do the transom on the on the framing table there and drag it back here and get it up and on there that shouldn't be a problem so no worries there um, I did pick up another one of these these rolling scaffolds uh, so I've got two of them now um, and obviously these come up uh, and at any height you need them to and when I get them up an extra notch or two which is what we'll need for when we're starting to work on the, the planking um, I think I can hook some short planks, you know, make some, some hooks to go between here and here. And then I can get even more out of these. I think these are 6 feet, so that's 12 feet, and then maybe put another, you know, 6 or 8 feet in there. Um, get me up to a length where I can uh, walk around and get individual boards planked on at a time. Because I think I'm going to try to use 20 footers you know, as my longest planks, where I can anyway. So that's all good. Um, and I've been working on getting my fuel tanks figured out. And, uh, and if you see those strings up there, I got them all taken down now, but I had plumb bobs run through here and lines strung across there and hanging down and trying to get the tanks figured out. Um, and I finally did. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll show you. I did some drawings for the for the for the welder people to to do. But I also did did a, a pattern here for one of the tanks, and uh, or for the you know the side view of one of the tanks. That way they can make sure not not get it wrong because uh, it is all you know different angles. Every corner is different angle. Uh, this would be the inside. Of course, this is the outs. This is the bottom of the boat. It would be the you know bottom of the frames. This would be the frames on the on the outside. And then this would be inside in the engine room. This would be the side in the engine room. So this will be facing the engine. There'll be two feet between this and the engine, and then another two feet for the engine, and then of course another two foot space on the other side. So that should be enough room. And I'm leaving myself enough room up here to quite a bit um, I don't know if you can see that that uh, pencil line and that nail up there that's uh, that's the height that the tanks will go in at 
uh, and that's actually the actually they wouldn't fit in there according to the plans but George had talked about uh, one of the things he he would do as an improvement to the to the 48 would be to raise the pilot house nine inches and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise the pilot house up nine inches, which also gives me nine more inches in the in the engine room. Now, technically, a tank would fit under there the way it is, but you got to put some, uh, you know, supports for the for the pilot house in there. So that'll come down, whatever that's going to be, four or five inches. So it would have been snug, but all things considered, these tanks they're going to be 80 inches long. Um, which is going to give me a little over a foot between the this frame here is going to differentiate the engi engine room and then aft is, is the state room so this is going to be the where the exhaust comes out if I, if I do a, a, a North Sea exhaust a wet exhaust and it would come out you know up here somewhere above the water line but I needed to leave myself enough room, you know, for the fuel tanks going to go from here up forward. I need to leave myself enough room to access the through hole there for the for the exhaust. Uh, so I wanted to leave myself about 13 inches, which I think should be enough to squeeze in there and and uh, and work on those through hulls. Other through hulls, of course, for you know water and stuff can come through, you know closer to the keel but the exhaust is going to need to go pretty sp specific place and I, like I said I don't think I would have been able to ever get the exhaust to go out the back of the boat out the stern for one thing it's a long ways to go I mean you have to run your exhaust all the way from here all the way back here you know to, to back to back here is where the transom comes up um, but not only that, but look at look at the rise there. My gosh, how high would you have to go to to get out? I mean, the only you'd have to go at least you know to to, to here. And you're talking three feet of rise. That means the exhaust pipe would have to be the exhaust pipe can't or isn't supposed to go up. So you'd have to have it running, you know, certainly above the sole level up here. Yeah, so I don't know. So I think either a North Sea system or a dry exhaust is going to be the way to go. And I spoke to a, a dealer on uh, on an engine today, a John Deere engine. I was thinking about the John Deeres or the Alpha Marine, or Beta Marine, I guess it is. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, um, and I told the John Deere guy I was interested in the, in the 80 horse, naturally aspired four-cylinder John Deere. And he emailed me back and said, no, you can't do that. It's not EPA approved. Well... I'm quite certain it is uh, for marine engines, uh, diesels, uh, 80 horse and, and under it does not need to have that, all that EPA crap on them. And that's the whole reason for it. I, you know, the smallest regular engine I'd get is, is a turbocharged and it's 100 horsepower. Well, I, you know, I guess if I had to do something like that, I could. But uh, the problem is if you run a turbo at, what if I'm running at 27, 28 horsepower? You know that's hard on the everything. Um, running a you know a higher output engine at that low of a power output. So um, and I think the guy just didn't know what he was talking about, which doesn't really surprise me because of course the dealer in my area is in my area, which is Iowa, and uh, I'm sure he hasn't done too many boat engines. But anyway, um, next thing I'm thinking about here is I wonder. If I can take these crosses, cross pieces out now, make it a little easier to move around in there, especially when we go to get the tanks done. And that's the next thing is getting these tanks done. Now I'm gonna tomorrow I'm gonna try to take my plans in this in this pattern to uh, to the welder and see if they can get started on those. Uh, should be almost 1,400 gallons, which is a little more than even I had expected, which is good. Uh, you can never have too much fuel capacity. But uh, I suppose, I don't know how long it's going to take him to get those done. Yeah, and see, here's a, if I'd have gone whole hog, um, if I'd have pushed it even, even more, really to my maximum, 
pulse to maximum, 1,745 gallons. But I don't know if I need quite that much. You know, that 1,400 gallons is going to be a lot of fuel. But the next thing is going to be what to do now that um, I'm waiting for the fuel tanks to get built. And I had to kind of wait with designing the, the fuel tanks until I had this part done. I got a few other little odds and ends jobs, things that need to be done, but I need to get the, the bow finished. But hopefully it doesn't take them too long. Well, I could probably use a little bit of a break too, but I don't know. If I try to take a little time off, I wind up getting bored and then I want to come back out and start working again. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's the update for first week in April. Uh, wish me luck on getting these tanks built.